Hi, I'm Jeannie and welcome to the best mat class for hypermobility pain relief. So it's the best mat class because it's been collated by your responses. So thank you all for contributing to this class. I've put together all your ideas. I've chosen the ones that don't require any special equipment and the ones that I think are going to be most accessible for everyone. But as always, if anything doesn't feel right for you, please skip that particular exercise. So let's get started. We're going to start lying down. So one of the most popular um, suggestions was breathing. So we're going to start with some nice gentle breathing practice. So get yourself comfortable on your mat or on your floor. Use cushions as much as you need to to support your head and neck or maybe your pelvis. And go ahead and come into this supine position with your knees bent, feet flat on the floor, and just rest your hands across your rib cage. And I just want you to take a moment to just let your body sink into the floor. Now, if you're someone who normally likes to skip the breathing parts and get onto the exercises, I really encourage you to stay and do this part of the video because the benefits for pain relief are really, really tremendous. So in taking time to soften the tissue, allowing the bones to settle into the floor, you start to release muscular tension. And oftentimes with a hypermobile body, we're overworking a lot of our superficial muscles to help hold us up. So this moment gives you an opportunity to recognize that you're overworking, recognize that you might be holding tension that you don't need to hold on to, and it gives you a chance to simply let go, a much needed chance to allow the body to rest. So we're not going to do any fancy breathing techniques, we're simply just going to feel the air coming in through our nose or our mouth. And then we're going to feel the air leaving our body, again either through the nose or the mouth. But what I would like you to notice is that the exhale allows you to feel a little bit softer a little bit heavier, a little bit quieter into the ground. So we're going to do two more rounds of breath. Just noticing the breath, feeling the breath. Don't try and change it. And again, focus on that heavy feeling of settling the bones. One more time, nice inhale. And a long exhale. Now we're going to slide our hands down to our pelvis. Pelvic rolling or pelvic tilts was also a popular suggestion. A really nice, gentle way of mobilising the lumbar spine. So keeping that sense of heaviness, we're going to start to just allow the pelvis to roll forward as we inhale. So increasing the arch in our back. As we exhale, we're going to lower the back, flattening the spine. Try not to push it, so just let it roll. So again, when you've been in pain, it's really important that we don't push the body into positions. Rather, invite your body to explore and sense a change in position. So try and use the least amount of muscular effort to roll your pelvis forward, roll your pelvis back. And this is a really nice way of relieving lower back pain as long as we're doing it without force. So if you start pushing and forcing, that could be detrimental if you're trying to get rid of your pain. So we'll just do one more. Inhale forward and exhale back. And then I just want you to find your position where your pelvis feels nice and comfortable. Now we're going to walk our feet and knees together. Now, if you're on a mat at home, you'll have more space than me. You can take your arms a little bit wider. But here in the studio, I'm a little bit restricted on my table. So make your arms comfortable. 
we're going to add in a little rotation. So twists and rotations seem to be, again, a really popular pain reliever. So we're going to try and keep the legs together. And we're just going to let the pelvis now roll to the side, trying to keep the feet and knees together. So what we don't want to do is let the knees slip apart because now my pelvis is twisted. So if I can keep my knees together, that's, that's going to be better for my back pain. Take a breath in. And again, feel the weightiness of your body rolling you back. So we don't want to be dragging the legs back with our lumbar spine. We want to try and use our breath to move the body. So as we exhale, we return to that idea of softening and settling rather than forcing the body. So again, it's not about getting your legs to the floor. Okay, we're not collapsing and hanging on our lower backs. We're using control. So we're getting a bit of strength around the hips as well, which is great. And then we're going to roll it back. So there's our first supine twist. We're going to walk our feet back out to hip distance. We're going to go into a bridge. And um, again, it doesn't have to be as high as I'm going. Listen to your body. But most important is that we use our feet. So really just wiggle your toes. Settle your feet into the ground. So feel your heels and the pads of your feet if you can. Check your neck is nice and soft. If you've got a cushion, you might want to get rid of your cushion while you do your bridging. Don't have too high a cushion or head support for this one. We're going to stand into the feet. As I stand into the feet, we go back to that pelvic roll that we've already done today. So the tail starts to lift. And then I stand into my feet more and I start to float the pelvis off the ground. So it might be that we're just coming to here today. But if I can breathe and stand into my feet more, maybe I can go a little higher. But I'm definitely not squeezing my bottom or pushing my hips up. I'm allowing the body to expand and lengthen, and that's what lifts me up. So again, we shouldn't feel any lower back pain. Belly should be nice and soft. Weight is dropping through the feet and the shoulders. And then we're going to soften the throat, soften the chest, soften the shoulders and roll it back down nice and controlled until your pelvis hits the ground and it settles. So we'll do that one more time. Find your feet first, let the pelvis respond to the feet and then we float up to whatever height feels good for you. It's a nice way of opening up the front of the hips if you can get up to a higher position. Soft belly, soft throat, down we come. Really feeling the weight of your bones as they touch the ground. And then just let your pelvis settle. So there's our bridge pose, a popular request. Now we had a few requests for stretching at ITB and glutes. Um, so I'm going to do one that's hopefully accessible. Um, there were a few suggestions that might be a bit tricky for some people. So I'm, we're going to lift one leg up and you can support it. And then we're going to just rotate the leg and just rest the foot on the hip, uh, sorry, on the thigh. And that might be enough. You might already be getting a stretch through here. Depends how tight you are through your hips. Now, if you wanted to increase that, you could just start to tip the pelvis back to that hip roll and that's going to start to increase the stretch here. Now if you wanted to take it to the next level, we're going to interlace behind this uh, other leg, pick it up and just support it. And this is normally quite a big stretch for a lot of people through the ITB and certainly the glutes. And if you wanted to again make it a little stronger, you're going to lift that foot up and just flex the foot. Now see if you can still breathe and soften the pelvis, soften the shoulders. So again, the breath is going to be really important for releasing muscular tension around the hip. And then you're going to slowly lower down, support yourself, lower it down, take that leg out again, and we'll see what the other side feels like. And it might feel, of course, different to the other side. So we have stage one, where I might just stay here, trying to soften the pelvis, make sure it's not twisted as you've gone into this position. Or I might just tip over to the side 
and start to do a nice stretch through here. Again, use your breath, soften into it, don't force it. And then if we want to go to the next stage, we're just going to support ourselves, pick up the leg. Again, use that breath, try and release the sacrum. And then final one is just lifting up, flexing the foot, having that leg at a right angle. And then very slowly coming out. Okay. So let's move on to some stability work. So obviously when we've been in pain, it's important that we start to build some stability through the joints as well. So dead bug, one of my favorite exercises as well, came up as a popular request. So we're going to take a breath in. Feel again the weightiness as you exhale of the pelvis, the shoulders, the head, nice and settled. On your next exhale, we're going to start to float one leg off the ground, followed by the opposite shoulder, or sorry, opposite arm, keeping that sense of heaviness through the back of the body. And then as we exhale, we're going to lower it back down. Obviously, we're trying not to arch our back. So can you maintain a sense of heaviness through the back of the body as you float the arm and leg up? Not about getting the arm to the floor, more about feeling the weightiness of the arm bones into the mat. So you're not holding the arm up here, you're not trying to go here, you're just letting that heaviness release your upper back. And one more time. So great for lumbar stability, shoulder organization, and then back down. Then you're gonna bring your feet and knees together again, pop your hands back on your pelvis, we're going to go into some knee drops. So this is a good alternative to the oyster or the clams, which can cause some um, pain for some people. So try this one as an alternative if you don't like the oyster. So again, find your heaviness. As you exhale, slowly let one leg roll out to the side. Again, not about getting the leg to the floor, definitely about keeping the opposite leg nice and heavy. On your next exhale, use the skin of your inner thighs to bring the leg back to center. Pelvis shouldn't move. And we go to the other side, sliding the leg away, keeping the ribs soft, exhaling, bringing it back. And one more each side. So can you feel heaviness in your opposite leg while you control the rotation in the other leg? Exhale to use the skin to draw the leg back together. And one more time, here we go. And then we're going to take one leg at a time up, give ourselves a nice hug. Again, this is great for lower back pain, just hugging the knees into the chest and gently rocking if you want to from side to side. Okay, and I'm just going to throw in one of my particular favourites as just some supported knee circles where you just start to circle the thighs around. Great for hip pain. Again, you're not forcing them, you're not pushing them. You're just gently mobilising the hip joint. And you can let your pelvis move on this one, so let it just roll with the motion of the legs. And then just throw your legs back down. Okay, so from here, we're gonna come on to all fours. So we have some great um, requests for some four point kneeling exercises. So you're gonna scoot yourself around, obviously use cushions, whatever you need to support your knees. Um, if you don't like weight bearing on your wrist because of wrist pain, you can um, obviously use a chair to support yourself so your wrists are not at such an angle or you can put um, towels under your wrists so your wrists are not at such an angle. So popular, the cat, one of my favourites too. So weight into the outside edge of our wrists, find that nice lifted spine. Toes can be tucked or flat, whatever feels comfortable. And we're going to start at our tail and we're going to start to round the spine. Try not to push with the arms. Really feel that you're lifting your front body up to meet the back body. But we're now pushing into the shoulders. Take a breath in when you're in your cat. And try and feel the skin across your back stretching as you inhale. 
Now as you exhale, start to uncurl the tail, sending the heart forward, but coming back to that lifted position so the head doesn't fall off. So this is an all round great exercise for tight spines, for breathing, but again, we want to avoid any pushing, any sort of forcing, because if you start to push into your shoulders, we know we're potentially going to cause some pain around the upper back. Now we're going to hold this next cat. So make sure you can still breathe. And on the next exhale, you're just going to hinge it back, obviously knees allowing, only go as far as your knees are happy to. But this again, just gives you a deeper stretch into that lumbar fascia. And then you're going to come forward, nice and smooth, uncurling. And we'll do that one more time. We're going to curl. Try not to push with the arms. Think about softening back into the hips. Shoulders soft. Nice deep breath. And then travel forward and back up. So just take a little rest off your wrists if your wrists are not used to weight bearing. So I'd like to have my elbows tight and just do a few little circles of the wrist. So rotation came up again in a quadruped position. We're going to do a threading the needle. Okay, so again, this is about rotating the rib cage, not forcing the shoulders. So we're going to take the palm of one hand, make sure you're not locking this elbow that you're, you're um, supporting yourself with. You're going to keep the hand there and then you're going to start to rotate the ribs. So you're going to see if you can send your hips a little bit higher into the air. So your sit bones are pointing up to the ceiling and your head can come down if that's comfortable. This elbow will obviously bend. Take a breath in and then stand into the supporting arm to bring you back and put your hand back. Now again, if you're really tight, you might not be able yet to go down into this sort of lowered position, in which case you're just going to do it here. Okay, so we work with where we are at the moment. And then over time, as the tissue softens and we get more control, we might be able to start to go into a bigger range. But for now, you work with where you are. One more time. Really release those hips. Remember to breathe. Come back. And then we're going to go back into our cat and just sit back. Child's pose, again, is a lovely exercise if your knees allow it. You could always put cushions behind your knees and just slowly walk your hands out. So you're trying to lengthen your lower back. Again, support your head, but if you can get your head down or support it with cushions, just make sure those arms are plugged into the spine that we're not overextending the arm bones. And we're just going to take a nice deep breath. And as you exhale, let the weight of your pelvis drop into your feet. And let your belly be soft. And very slowly start to come up, use your hands to help you. And our final exercise before we finish back in child's pose, a little bit of extension. So it was good that we had some extension requests. So I'm going to just show you a baby extension. Sorry, my creaky table. So come on down onto your tummy. Again, cushions can go under the pelvis if you need to. Head is going to come into your hands. Make sure your pelvis is relaxed, so give it a little rock. And let your shoulders be soft and heavy. So you're going to think of inhaling to lift the upper back off the floor. Keep looking down at your hands. Try not to do this with your head and extend the neck. Okay, so we're trying to lengthen and strengthen the back of the neck and the upper back muscles. And then as we exhale, we're going to soften and release. And again, inhale. Trying again not to push with my arms. So we're trying to find spinal strength. Now this is a great one for neck pain, upper back pain, because you start to strengthen those back extensors. One more time. Doesn't matter how high you come, you might be down here. 
Yeah, it takes time to get the mobility and the strength to lift up a little bit higher. Shoulders soft. And then back down. And just roll your head from side to side across your hands, massaging your forehead, releasing your neck. And then from there, bring your hands around, bring yourself back up, and you can take your knees apart this time, sit your hips back, and just come back into a child's pose, just to release the low back, release the upper back, and take a nice deep breath, releasing the back of the pelvis down, feeling gravity, drawing you down to the ground. And then very slowly walk your hands all the way back up. So there we have it. The best mat class for hypermobility pain relief. I hope you found that useful um, and enjoyable and a useful part of um, any pain relieving regime you may have. So keep moving. I hope to see you again soon on my YouTube channel and until then, stay zebra strong.